I'll just surrender to him. God needs a sound. He needs a sound. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Marriages. Yes. Marriages that we thought was broken. Yes. Are coming together yes. right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. You're reworking yes. some things in the yes. lives of your people. We thank you for the rework right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for the rework. Thank you for the rework. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're working it out. He's working it out. He's working it out. Hallelujah. 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 He's the honor. He's not too late. He is the God of second chance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have not left you. He said, I will never leave nor forsake you. He said, come. Come. He just needs you to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's in the place. He's here. He's here. God is here. Hallelujah. He's, he's restoring your soul.
okay? But my God deserves praise, okay? He deserves praise. Now you can sit there if you want to, but you won't stay. next to me y'all we'll try it again that's a testimony next to me yeah. y'all amen yeah. amen. amen i, I oh that's the song that she said I'm, I'm looking for a miracle i'm, I'm standing next to a miracle next come next on amen. and how many know if he did it before he, he it. can do it again yeah. same god same god in this place. Amen. Yahweh, Father of lights, fill this house, oh God. Fill us with your spirit, your power, and your anointing, oh God. We came here for you, Father. For worship unto you, for praise unto you, oh God. Can somebody just give God a praise with the fruit of our lips? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. I think so often we get caught up on what the, what, the, what the singers sound like or what the musicians may be playing, but just about five seconds. Anybody got a personal relationship with God where well, you don't need nobody else to join in with you? You've got enough in yourself to give our God a praise just about five seconds if there's anybody in here who don't need to get hyped up but you know it for yourself you can just look back come on come on somebody give him a praise in this place come on with the fruit of your lips I understand the enemy desires to stop your worship but I dare you to give him a sacrifice of your praise in this place come on somebody give him a sacrifice sometimes sacrifices don't feel good sometimes it's not something that you want to give 
Come on, come on, lift your hands in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, we worship you, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. Hallelujah. You alone are worthy to be praised. You alone are worthy to be magnified. Father, we bless your name today. Father, we're not coming asking for anything, Lord God, but we we just love we just loving on you today, Lord God. We're blessing your name because you're worthy to be praised. We're blessing your name because you're God and that you're God alone. You stand in other, you don't stand in any other class, Lord God, but your own class. you are king of kings and you are lord of lords father we bless your wonderful name lord god you have no rival lord god there is no equal father we give you glory come on come on lift your hands lift your hands hallelujah Fill this house, Lord God. Fill this house. Fill this house. Fill this house in the name of Jesus. Fill this house. Father, we just want to experience your presence today. We want to experience your presence, oh God. We want to experience your presence, oh God. Father, we know that when we seek your face, we can get what's in your hands. We're not asking for anything right now, God, but we just, we just worship you, Lord God. Father, we honor you, Lord God. We give you praise, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we kiss your presence. Come on, come on, cry out, cry out, cry out. Spare not. Lift up your voice like a triumph, like a trumpet. Father, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When you when you when you don't know what to say, when you don't know how to describe it, just say thank you. When you say hallelujah, just say hallelujah. Come on, come on. Give him the four truths of your lips. Give him, give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for not giving us what we deserve. Thank you for giving us what we don't deserve. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your love and kindness. Thank you for your tender mercy. Thank you, Lord God, that is new every morning. Father, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we need you. We need you. We need you. Rest. 
Rest in this place, Lord God. Rest in this place. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on. Come on. Give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. Make it personal. Make it personal. Give it to him. Make it personal. Make it personal. Make it personal. Do whatever you got to do. But kiss the presence of God. Yeah. Father, we're here to serve you. We're here to serve you. Speak, Lord, your servant hear it. Speak, Lord, your servant hear it right now in the name of Jesus. The atmosphere of expectancy is the breeding ground for miracles. And we create the atmosphere right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fill this house. Fill this house. In the name of Jesus. Fill this house. Every vessel right now. Every vessel. Every vessel right now in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on. Make it personal. Talk to the Father. Talk to the Father. Talk to the Father. Yeah. 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 Tell him who he is. Ah. <laughs> uh. Thank you, Lord. 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 God, we can mm, we can't do this thing without you, Lord. We can't do this thing without you, Lord. We need your guidance, we need your instructions. Whatever's being done behind the scenes, reveal it to your prophets right now, Lord God. Reveal it to your people. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus she da 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 ba siya expose it expose it expose it expose it expose it right now in the name of Jesus expose it right now in the name of Jesus expose it right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus God is not going to leave you in the dark but you got to get in his presence. In his presence are the answers right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah, we declare in the name of Jesus that the devil is defeated. The devil is defeated. The devil is defeated. Come on, come on. The devil is defeated in the name of Jesus. And Jesus is Lord. Come on, let's give God a praise in this house. Hallelujah. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, welcome Rock Church International. Come on, give God a praise. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo! Y'all good? Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. 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 We declare right now, right now, it's offering time. It's another form of worship. Amen. Let's extend our worship right now 
in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You can go to Give Lafay right now. Go to Rock Church International. Cash App, dollar sign, Rock Church INT. Hallelujah. And you can sow your traditional seed, your tangible seed. It's an envelope right in the seat in front of you. Amen. And you can put it in the box in the back. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Proverbs 18, 16, it says, A man's gift will make room for him and bring him before great men. Hallelujah. We declare in the name of Jesus, your gift right now in the name of Jesus is making room for you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Everybody say bless. 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 You're blessed. I'm blessed. You're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We press down every stronghold sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is Hallelujah. You believe in the power of prayer. Stand and stretch your hands towards your guild and lift your phones, lift your, lift your offering in the air. In the name of Jesus. Father, in obedience to your word, Father, you said that what we give up for the kingdom, we'll get it back and we'll get it back in a hundredfold return. And just like that eye, that, that camera that goes through the eye of the needle, Father, we declare that as we, uh, as we, we relinquish our substance oh god on the other side of that needle we declare in the name of jesus we'll get it back in the name of jesus father we so as we sow to our so our seeds our tithes our offering our first fruit we tell it to go and grow we'll see you real soon in jesus name amen hallelujah 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 amen this is uh this is our time we want to uh uh Going, we want to go into our communion right quick. Amen. Hallelujah. Ministers, please take your places. You leave it here. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning. That was a little dry. Good morning. Amen. Um, as Pastor David said, this is our time where we can move into our communion. Um, as I stand before you, I always say that this is an opportunity um, because some people don't get to worship as freely as we do. Um, some people are persecuted. Um, they have to do worship in secret. So we have an opportunity to worship and remember what God has done for us. Amen. So as the ministers are uh, getting in position, I'm just going to share a few words with you about communion. We always want to make sure that you all have an understanding as you take this communion. Um, I know because you are members of Rock Church International, you know this, but I'm just going to remind you just in case. I see a lot of children here. So parents, I want you to make sure you check your children and make sure they have an understanding of doing this, right? Because we know what the scripture says, right? And while you're checking your children, examine yourself right because we don't want to take this communion and we're not worthy right 
Amen. Uh, ministers, you can come forward. And while they're coming forward, uh, again, I'm going to share a few words with you all. You know, I was sitting in the back and I was uh, thinking about this. Um, you know, it's, it, it, it's so great that we have this opportunity together. But I think about the disciples as they was taking this communion. They was doing the Last Supper. They actually got to sit at the table with, eat with, and drink with, Right? And even then, right, having been in his presence and taking this communion with him, um, the people were still willing and able to crucify him. It was only about a week's time from when they were, Hosanna, Hosanna, right, to crucify, crucify. And this were people who were sitting, eating, and drinking, and being amongst him. And so how easily can we fall into crucifying Jesus ourselves? By our words, by our actions, by our disobedience, right? Um, we're getting ready to move into an election. Um, and no matter how you feel about it, each candidate has their agenda, right? Um, and we don't really know when we're voting them in if they're going to do what they said that they were going to do but one thing that we know about Jesus is that he is always going to stand on his word we don't have to wonder we don't have to doubt we don't have to worry we don't have to be concerned about it he is true and what he did over 2,000 years ago is still having an impact in your lives today. Amen. So I'm going to read uh, some scripture and then I'm going to get out of your way so you all can take communion. I'm going to start with John 6 and 51. And it says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. That's his promise to you all. That is his agenda. Eat from this bread and you will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give from the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove amongst themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily. I like when Jesus say things twice. Because it's like, it, listen. Okay, listen, pay attention. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. There's this song, it says, it's good to be alive, but it's best to live. God is telling us if we don't eat of his flesh and of his blood, we have no life in us. So you can be alive and not live. But he goes on to say, Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth me, and I in him. This is our opportunity to take and eat of his flesh, that he may dwell in us, and we may dwell in him. Amen. You all may stand and come forth.
Amen. All right, we're going to take the bread, which represents the flesh of Jesus Christ. In his word, he says, this is my flesh, which was broken. I like to break the way for every time, just as a reminder, symbolism. He said, every time you do this, do it in remembrance of me. You may now eat the bread. He then said that this is my blood, which represents a new testament. Amen. As we drink this, we do so in remembrance of him. And then we'll seal this with a prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we just give you thanks, praise, and honor. We thank you for this opportunity to worship you, oh Father God. There's a time, oh Father God, and some of us are seeing it now, Lord, where people aren't really worshiping you, Father God, but we thank you for the true worshipers, oh Father God, who will worship you in truth and in spirit, oh Father God. We thank you, Lord, for what you did for us on that cross, oh Father God. And we thank you that you always, always has, always will stand on your word, oh Father God. So we thank you, Lord, that as we dwell in you, that you dwell in us, oh Father God, and you are making us new. Father, we pray all of these things in the name of your son, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. And so it is. Come on, let's give God a victory shout in the name of Jesus. No, no, I said let's give God a victory shout. Come on, church. Whittier needs to hear your praise right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, if the Lord has kept you this far, you ought to give him an ignorant praise right now. Come on, come on, we can do better than that. Ignorant means I don't have no rules, no regulations. I just need to give him some praise right now. Come on, he's allowed us to make it all the way to November. And for that, you ought to give God some praise, y'all. Come on, come on, come on. I know Ada will give God some praise right now. Come on, I'm going to try this side right now. Where my ignorant worshiper is at right now? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, we need some more ignorant worshipers right now. We just don't know no better. We don't know the rules. We just... We just want to give God some glory right now. Because somebody said he's worthy. Come on, come on. He's worthy to be praised, y'all. And we cannot panic. We cannot worry about who gets in the White House. As long as God is on the throne, we good. We good. We good. We good. We good. In the name of Jesus. Ah, as you may be seated in the name of Jesus, it is good to be here. As they say, it's better to be seen than to be viewed. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. We got a special guest in the building. Come on. He's no stranger to us. This is my brother from another mother. We go way back. Him and his wife, we go way, way back, y'all. In the name of Jesus. Can we shout the fact that First Lady Liz is in the building? Praise God. Praise God. We want to acknowledge and celebrate the ministry gift of my brother. Oh, man, my brother. We, we hung out the other day, and I told him yesterday I was still in tears laughing about some stuff in the name of Jesus. And a lot of times it's good for, for ministers and the fivefold ministry gifts just to have fun. Is that all right? Is that all right? Or do y'all want the one, bless your daughter. The Lord is in the miracle working business. No, sometimes it's just fun to be, you know, have fun, to be cool, watch the lions, laugh, joke, and stuff like that. So this is a real brother. He has many titles. Prophet, pastor, doctor. Can we celebrate that, y'all? <laughs> In the name of Jesus. 
So I want y'all to help me celebrate my brother as he come. None other than Pastor Dr. Rodriguez Alexander in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I get some more volume. I can't hear myself. Come on, let's bless the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I feel like that was for me. Thank you so much. That was so kind. Now, can we bless the God of our salvation? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's rise to our feet. Let's celebrate our King. Come on, if you have... Bring it out just a little bit because I want to make sure you hear me. If you have the activities of your limbs, I want you to rise to your feet and celebrate the great God of our salvation. Come on, all over the building. Don't fool me. Come on, let's celebrate him. Come on, open your mouths and give the Lord some praise. Come on, come on. Come on, lift up your voice this morning. Come on, celebrate him because he is worthy. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Rewind, rewind. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank God for you, you and you being here today. Can we honor the man of God of this house and the person of Dr. Terry Caldwell? Appreciate you, man, so much. You have a true man of God, a real man of faith. And I don't say that just because I'm standing on this platform, but you all need to hear me, Rock Church. You have a true man of God. Don't take it for granted because he wears his blue I mean, I, I, I like them too. I, I, you know. I'm in my flow. His maze in blue. Uh, because he rides a motorcycle. Don't take those things for granted. At the end of the day, this is a man of God. Whom God ordained for your lives. To your degree of receiving the anointing upon his life will determine the success in your life. You better hear me this morning. To your degree of you receiving the anointing that's resting upon his life will determine the success in your life. We're not honoring, we're not worshiping the man. We're worshiping the God in the man. We don't trust man we trust the God in the man so I appreciate you my brother I appreciate you on so many levels um, and after Friday night I really really appreciate you um, we went down to uh, one mic uh, comedy club y'all ever heard of it one mic comedy club okay all right I know it's first Sunday so y'all just too holy to laugh right now but yeah um, I got it out I got it out Friday so I can be solemn today um, Nephew Tommy was in the building, uh, and what was the, the other comedian's name? Celebrity the comedian. Yeah, it was it was a time we had, boy. It was it was hilarious, but we had the opportunity to laugh, to to just enjoy life. Glory to God. Thank God for my friend surprising me, Dr. Waverly. Come on, bless the Lord, for Dr. Waverly being here. Now where's your church? Seven in Refuge Temple. Right up the road there, about seven minutes away. Yeah, amen. So thank, thank God for him being here today. Uh, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to minister this through your word to these through your sheep. I just really sense that God wants to do some healing in this room today. Some holistic healing. God wants to do some holistic healing. He's concerned about every entity of your life, beloved. And I sense the presence of God is here today. 
There's some emotional trauma that some of you have dealt with and you camouflage it real good. The Lord says that he's coming to heal you. He has come to heal you from that bondage because it hinders your ability. Those that are viewing, it hinders your ability to really lean into Jesus. So you hear the Father saying that today I come to destroy every yoke in your life every hurt of the past every unhappy every unhealthy every unholy relationship of the past hear the lord saying that i am cleansing you from that very thing and the lord says that as you open up your hearts to receive my love i'm going to restore everything that you allowed the enemy to to, to take from you I am restoring your joy. I am restoring your peace. I am restoring your confidence. I am restoring your identity. I am bringing you to a place of learning who you are and whose you are. And the Lord says what's past is past. It's the dawning of a new day. So rise up, O man and woman of God, and assume your role as a believer in me. For not many days from now, you're going to see an outpouring of my spirit. Even the nights when you're up at night and you're scrolling through your phone, the Father says, put those down because I'm nudging you. I'm summoning you to come and be closer to me. No, oh man of God, man of God, woman of God, what the enemy meant for bad, I'm turning it around for your good. And every hurt that has caused physical illness, he says, I'm, he says, I'm healing you even right now. Father, I come against doubt, fear, unbelief. And I release faith in this room now. Glory to God. I release faith in this room. But these are your sheep to receive it now. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let faith rise in the room. Let faith rise in the room. Glory to God. Glory to God. The presence of the Lord is in this place. And just as the Lord has extended grace on your life, I'm speaking to leaders now. I need you to extend that same grace to those that are coming up. God never gave up on you. Don't you give up on them. The Bible says with brow beating, dragging down the street, I draw all men unto me. He says with love and kindness, have I drawn all men unto me. So adjust your approach Towards witnessing and walk in love. It's the love of God that drives us, draws us to repentance. Walk in love, people of God. Walk in love. In this season, it's critical for your own life to walk in love, to be gracious, to be kind. The Bible talks about the anointing falling from the head down. Your pastor is a kind man. And he's a man's man. Yet he's a kind man. Grab that anointing and rest upon his life to be kind in Jesus' name. I don't mean, you know, being nasty, nice. Be kind. text check check this but I don't find anywhere in scripture it talks about being nice it talks about being kind there's a difference in being kind and being nice nice to me is tolerating kind is being genuine you're extending yourself be kind to one another be kind to yourself be kind to yourself take the pressure off yourself you didn't reach the goal this week, it's okay. 
Start next week. I said that I was going to work out every day I've been here. I've only done it, what, twice? Yeah, yeah, twice, I think, this week. But I've been to Lafayette, Coney Island twice. <laughs> been to, on my way, no, I, not on my way. I went to Lose Deli yesterday, got the Superboy. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll reach my goal. You get my point? Live. 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 Take the pressure off of yourself. Live. In Jesus' name. I hope you receive that. Matthew chapter 14. Let's get into this. Matthew chapter 14. Keep, re keep playing for me. Keep playing for me. It said that music tames the savage beast. So let's keep playing. Because some people may not have received that word. They may be mad. Just keep playing. <laughs> Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 23. 33, it says, immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land. Buffeted by the waves because of the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out <clears throat> in fear. This is how you know he was black. <laughs> They were trying to get off that boat. You don't see, y'all don't see these scary movies. Don't play with me. Y'all don't see these scary movies. We ain't trying to investigate nothing. We trying to get out of it. Okay, all right. Okay, okay. all right. Um, <laughs> funny to me. Uh, verse 27, but Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. And Peter, somebody say Peter. Peter. Lord, if it's you, tell me to come out to the water he, and he probably did sound like that Lord if it's you Peter replied tell me to come to you on the water come verse 29 he said then Peter got out of the boat walked on the water and came toward Jesus come that one word carried so much weight that everyone on the boat could have walked on the water but Peter heard the voice of the Lord and responded. Here's a principle. Whenever a word to the house is going forth, or whenever the Lord is speaking a prophetic word over someone, if you identify with that, pull that word. Make it personal. When he spoke, he says, come. Everybody could have come out, but Peter had enough faith to step out of the boat. I hear the Lord saying today, get some faith to respond to my word. It's one thing to uh, listen. It's another thing to hear. I can listen to everybody in here, but I can only hear who I tune into. I've been in a space in my life where I don't just listen to what people say. I hear what they're doing. I hear what they're doing. Action speaks louder than words. I hear what you're saying. I listen to what you're saying, but I hear what you're doing. I hear what you're doing. So he says, come. Then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. I can't swim. I'm from the east side of Detroit. I would not hang up. Oh, okay. He says, Lord, save me. <laughs> Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him, you little, you of little faith. And he said, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. 
Jesus reached out his hand and grabbed Peter. You of little faith, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? Today I'm talking for a few moments from the thought, from doubt to dominion, the faith that overcomes. From doubt to dominion, the faith that overcomes. Thank you, man of God. We must see Jesus and hear his voice in the midst of the storms of life. He will enable us to stay above the challenges if we stay focused on him all the way. If we stay focused on him all the way. Now this line is a revelation. You of little faith, why did you doubt? If Peter had not doubted, he would have been walking still. If he had not allowed the wind to distract him, he could have reached Jesus still afloat. According to Jesus' diagnosis, the key to staying afloat is (coughs) faith. Excuse me. The key to staying afloat is faith. Faith in Christ will keep you from sinking. Write that down. Thank you so much. Faith in Christ will keep you from sinking. Faith in Christ today will keep us from sinking, here it is, under the weight of life problems. Why? I'm glad you asked. Because Christ is the reason he is walking on water. Christ was the reason Peter was walking on water. He has, it has nothing to do with the storm or waves, nothing human, nothing intellectual. Christ is the only power that kept him up. Christ was the only power that kept him up. Christ will be the reason we will stay afloat above the challenges of life. Come on, say man to this this morning. Christ will be the only reason that we stay afloat in the midst of life's situations. Peter was has a higher calling, the Bible says. He is the rock upon which Christ will build his church. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. But he must learn, here it is, to stay focused on Christ and not allow daunting difficulties to overwhelm him. We have to stay focused on Christ and not allow the situations around us to distract us or get the better of us. Come on, say amen to this. Amen. Say amen. Say amen like amen. Give me time to, to drink this. Song. Praise God, praise God. Come on now. Focus. We got to stay focused. Focus. Focus. Write this down. Focus is not an option. It's a requirement. It's a requirement. Shameless plug. I have an apparel line, and that's the next design that's coming out, actually. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. But praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Is that okay? I, I, okay, I, okay. All right. <laughs> you, you, that's too much now. <laughs> um, Jesus says, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. But he needs to stay focused. He said this to Peter. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But Peter needs to stay focused. We've got to stay focused when we're faced with trials and tribulations. We got to look ahead. We got to look beyond what we're seeing. We got to move past what we're feeling if we're trying to get what God called us to have. Come on. We've got to look beyond what we're seeing because our, our, our focus, our sight will make us do some crazy things. Come on. Our mind will tell us to do some crazy things. Like, you know, flying here. Uh, I, you know, they say put on your, on your, on your seatbelt. We're getting ready to land. And, and in my mind, I said, no, I don't want to put it on. What, you going to put me off the plane because I ain't got my seatbelt on? But I end up putting it on. I mean, at the end of the day, God forbid, God forbid it go down. What's the difference in the, the, the belt or not having? Anyway, here's my point. Focusing on the bigger picture. Now, this part is following order. Following order. I have to do what's set 
before me. Peter needed to know that then, and we need to know it today. Amen. To fix our eyes on Jesus and refuse to allow difficult circumstances to unnerve us. Think for a moment, beloved. What do you think put Jesus up to walking on the water? Did he want to impress his disciples with a nice trick? The miracles that Jesus performed had often been the benefits of the people. He healed the sick, the blind, and the lame. He multiplied food for the hungry. Gathered fish, fishishes, <laughs> for the fishermen. That's, that's in the, the, the uh, King James Version. Fishishes, fishishes. Changed water into wine for a wedding couple, and the list goes on. But this was different. This moment was almost like a show, if you will, but it wasn't. When God met Moses, he appeared and spoke to him through a burning bush, Exodus chapter 3. When God had a message to Balaam, he caused a donkey to speak to him. When God had a word for Elijah to encourage him, he came through a gentle whisper after a powerful wind, earthquake, and fire tore through the mouth of the cave. There is a pattern in these encounters, beloved. In each case, God had to get the person's attention. He had to get the person's attention. In, in each case, God had a task for the person. Jesus did not just perform a nice trick. He was trying to get their attention. There are things that you have faced. There are things that you will face. It's to get your attention. I wonder if there's anybody in here this morning that's willing to respond when God speaks and not doubt what he's saying, but look and say, yep, I, I, I believe this is the word of the Lord for me. I believe God is speaking to me in this situation. I, 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 I understand now why I had to go through this. It makes sense now. It didn't make sense in the midst of. Come on. Yeah, come on I'm going through so much hell. Keep going, beloved. The operative word is through. Go through it. Don't stay in the situation that you're finding yourself in. Go through it, I guarantee you. There is victory on the other side. Come on, give God some praise for that right there. Going through problems is not God saying that I don't love you. Going through things is not God saying that I want you to fail. Going through things is, the, is, the, is the, the fact that you're going through and you're talking about it shows that God was with you the whole time. Everything we go through is to be used experientially to strengthen our brother or our sister. Come on, talk to me in here. Come on. Everything that we're facing, Jesus said to Peter, Simon said to Peter, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to sift you as wheat, but I've prayed for you that your faith fail you not. Come on. In the weakness, Simon uh, in the Greek means twig. Peter means rock. So while Simon was at his weak point, at his lowest moment, he says, twig, twig. Come on. Weak man, weak man. Come on. Satan desires to sift you as weak, but I prayed for you that your faith fell you not. Come on. The Bible says when he had converted, which means when he had bounced back, when he returned, when he, when he came to himself, when he realized that he was the rock, when he realized he was the Petra, when he realized that he was strong, he says, he says, I, 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 may have been, I may have been shaken, but my faith is intact. Glory to God. Attack me in any area that you choose, Satan, but as long as my faith is intact, no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. It'll form, it'll get in my face, but it will not prosper. It won't prosper. Glory to God. He says, he says, he says, I see what you're going through, but there's a, but there's a good reason for it all. <laughs> Problems are with purpose. Pain is with purpose. I heard this. I don't know how true it is. But it said that when a, a woman is having a child, I haven't experienced it. This is what I heard. <laughs> that the pain is unbearable, and I hear that, that death walks around the closest to. But after the pain, 
after the discomfort, after the crying, after the threats to the spouse, after all of those things, there's a joy that comes forth. Come on. There's a beauty that comes forth. After everything you've been through, beloved, there is still joy awaiting you on the other side. Glory to God. Somebody said, give God some praise for that right now. I'm telling you, everything that you're going through, beloved, is to get you from doubt to dominion. It's to get you to the place of taking total dominion over every dark thing that comes your way, every obstacle that comes your way. It's God's way of saying when you get through it, pull your brother or your sister. Glory to God. When you have converted, when you return, when you have bounced back, you can strengthen your brother and your sister. Come on. You can have the testimony. There is no secret to what God can do. What he's done for others, he can do the same thing for you. Come on. Come on. Come on. I understand it now. Paul says right now we see through a glass darkly. Come on. We don't see it, but, but we'll understand it better by and by. Come on. I want to encourage you with this truth. Your by and by is imminent. Come on, your, your joy is on the way. Your victory is here right now. Glory to God. It's here right now. So Jesus was revealing his divine presence and power in a way that Peter must come to understand. Only God can do such a thing. Only God can can allow you to walk on water. Peter saw both his presence in the midst of the darkness and his power in the midst of the storm. Peter was the only one that saw his presence in the midst of the darkness and his power in the midst of the storm. The other disciples didn't get a chance to see the power in the midst of the storm because they didn't step forward on the word Come, come on. Why is everybody, why are they getting blessed? Why I'm not receiving my blessing? Because they responded. Oh, God's got favoritism. God's not a respecter person. He's a respecter of faith. If you got faith, he's going to respond to it. Glory to God. If you're going to move when I, when I speak, the Lord says, I'm going to respond to your cry. At every threatening encounter, we must see both of these. The presence in the midst of the storm and the power, the presence in the midst of darkness and the power in the midst of the storm. At every threatening encounter, we must see both of these. It is critical whether we sink or stand depends on our ability to see these with our eyes of faith. I'll say it again. Whether we sink or stand depends on our ability to see these through the eyes of faith. The power, the presence in darkness, the power in the storm. The Bible says Peter saw and wanted to experience his power. Peter saw it and wanted to experience it. He said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Verse 8, verse 28. He is... If he is master, then Peter wants to submit to his will and his call. He says, Lord, if it's you, I want to submit to it. Peter wasn't playing a game or seeking fun. He can never, it can never be fun to step out of the boat in any circumstances. There's no fun about stepping out in the boat in any circumstance. There is no fun stepping out in the boat. We go to a hotel and, you know, Lydia's our little dolphin. She loves water. Uh, she loves water. Dad, you going to get in the water? No. Why? It's cold, baby. It's, 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 it's cold. I ain't trying to get in that water. It's, it's cold. But she, no, it's not, Dad. It's not cold. So uh, a couple months ago, I think it was, we were somewhere, and she got in the water, and I came downstairs, and I just jumped in the water. She's like, Dad, you're in the water. Yeah, and I'm freezing, too, but I'm in here. I'm adjusting. There's not ever fun time getting in water unless it's like 80 degrees, the water being 80 degrees. I'm not, I don't. So there was no, there was no fun at getting in this, to getting out of the boat, getting in the water. Unless you call me to come, I'm not going to move. 
Peter says, unless you call me to come, I'm not going to move. Again, the 11 other disciples were probably rooted in the boat out of fear and speechless. Wow. Only Peter cried out. He really wanted to do Jesus, to do what Jesus was doing. He really wanted to experience it. What would Jesus do? Peter said, I don't know, but I'm going to do it. I want to do it. I want to experience it. You see, beloved, in in him, a thirst to follow Christ he had. He is the one who confessed that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, to, the, to one who declares that he will follow him, even to die with him. The only one who said he loves Jesus was Peter. That's why before he gets out of the boat, Peter wants to make sure Jesus thinks it's a good idea. You know, I'm over the good ideas, man. I'm in, a, it's, it's, I'm in a season and a space where I want only God ideas. Come on. I don't, I don't want a good idea. I know it sounds good. It feels good. I want to know that God is speaking. I want to know that this is the will of God. I don't just want the sovereignty, if you will, where, where I, if I move, he makes a decision. No, in this season, I want to move when God says move. That's why, beloved, before he gets out of the boat, he says again, uh, is it you, Jesus? Is it a good idea if I come? He asked for confirmation, and Jesus said, come. Peter was the spokesperson for all the disciples on the boat. If it's your will, come. Jesus said, come. All y'all come. But nobody said, no, no, I don't, I don't want to come. It's too cold. It's, it's, how do I know it's you, Jesus? Peter says, tell me to come to you on, tell me to come to you on the water. Verse 29, uh, he says, Peter walked on the water. Verse 29 says, Peter walked on the water and came toward Jesus. It's very clear here. Jesus is the reason he is stepping out. Why? Because he is the object of his faith. Amen. Jesus must be the object of our faith. So Peter showed faith. He heard his call, and then he stepped out. Peter showed faith. He heard his call, come, and then he stepped out. God says, do. The enemy of doubt, fear, and unbelief has robbed some of you from, from moving forward. Analyzing your way out of your success. Analyzing your way out of your victory. My brother, I believe this, man. There are some people that don't want healing because it gives a different level of uh, attention. Where sickness, everybody gets the attention. You know, we, we, oh, I'm, I'm just not feeling good today. What's the matter? Um, well, I got this. And don't tell them that's something wrong with you because they're going to one-up you with their sickness. <laughs> just keep looking up here. They won't know I'm talking about you. Don't be looking around. <laughs> Imagine wanting the attention of, I'm a miracle. Come on, God healed me. Come on, God transformed my life. I was sick unto death, but God touched my sick body and he healed me. But, the, but because of the trick of the enemy, the lie of the enemy that we have accepted, we'd rather lie in sickness just to get the attention that we crave for. I want the attention that God has for me. And it says, you are healthy, whole, and complete. Come on. You are healed by my stripes. To not accept the healing is to say that what he did on Calvary's cross was not enough. I accept every level of healing that comes to my body. Glory to God. You are healed, receive that, glory to God. You are whole, receive that. You are healthy, receive. Whatever you're hearing from the heavens, you better receive that, glory to God. And the Bible says, and he got it. No wonder Jesus entrusted him the responsibility of starting the church. That's radical discipleship. We heard Christ call, obey his call, and take the step to do it. Radical discipleship. This is not risk-taking feat. Some bungee jumping or parachuting thing. It's not risky. It's not jumping out of a plane, you know, um, bungee jumping. It's not a risky thing, a risky-taking feat. Peter was obeying the call of Jesus to do what Jesus was doing. He simply wanted to be like Jesus. 
Peter did not step out because he likes to. He steps out because Jesus said, come. I don't know that I would have moved to Portland if it was just a decision that I had to make. As a matter of fact, Portland was not even on my radar. I wanted to go to Hawaii, North Carolina, South Carolina. Those were options. But he said, you go to Portland. Because he said, go, I went. Write this down. Do not forfeit your God-given destiny for selfish desires. I don't care what it is. It can be something. It doesn't necessarily have to be sin. Do not forfeit your God-given destiny for selfish desires. So the Bible says that Peter said, Lord, bid me to come. He steps out because Jesus said, come. Isn't that the heart of every true disciple of Christ? To obey his call and do what he is doing today. To step out in faith knowing that he who calls us is faithful and he will surely enable us. Peter says, in a way, command me and I will do it. You see, true faith obeys. There cannot be faith in God without obedience. The fact that we disobey means we have no faith in what God says. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Yeah. Belief must follow with action. If not, that isn't a belief at all. If you believe it, respond to it. Otherwise, it's not belief at all. If we say we believe God, we must do what he says. The Bible says that even the demons believe in God. Yeah. Write this down. Obedience is true faith in action. Again, obedience does not mean we will be spared adversity. <laughs> That's the part right there, man. That's the part. The storm rages still. In fact, if it did not stop, it did not stop until they got into the boat. The storm raged still, and it didn't stop until they got in the boat. So you're telling me that even with Jesus being with me, I am still going to face storms? Absolutely. But you'll get through the storms. Unharmed. Un unharmed. Come on. You'll get through it victoriously. Because Jesus was right there with you. Come on. He was covering you. He was carrying you the whole time. God wants us to stay focused even in the midst of the storm. Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. In the midst of the darkness and the noise of the storm, we must see Jesus and hear his voice. Only then can we be assured. Only then can we overcome the odds and tread above the problems. When we step out in the midst of the storm, we must have a revelation of what Jesus can do for us. We must have a revelation what Jesus can do for us. Look at the person next to you. Tell him, say, if he did it before, he can do it again. Come on, tell him, say, if he did it before, he can do it again. Ty said, he's the same God right now, same God back then. Come on, if he did it, if God healed somebody one time in Scripture, and he did, he's got to do it again. Come on. If he set somebody free one time in scripture, and he did, he's got to do it again. Come on. If he made a miracle manifest one time in scripture, he's got to do it again. Come on. He's, he's the same God back then. He's the same God right now. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask 
or think according to the power, here it is, that works in us. And what is that power? Faith. Glory to God. It's, it's faith that's going to move God. If you've got the faith, he's got, he's got the power. That's good stuff right there. Glory to God. The, you mean to tell me I've got power? exactly what I'm telling you. If you are a child of God, how many believers in the building? Come on. You possess power. You, you can speak. The Bible says to call those things that be not as though they were and they shall come to be. Come on. If you've got the faith to speak it, it's going to come. It's going to come to pass. God is not a man that he should lie. No, the son of God that he ought to repent. If God spoke it, it's got. Can I say got to? It's got to come to pass. It's got to come to pass, man. Because God spoke it. Somebody said if God were to lie, it will still be true. Come on. He, he just can't lie. Come on. He can't lie. His, his word is true. And, and the Bible says that he watches over his word to make sure it comes to pass. God says, I'm going to keep my word. I mean, I wonder how many of you are willing to, to watch over your word to, to make sure what you say is going to happen. Come on. No longer breaking promises. Come on. But speaking, I'm trying, brother. Glory to God. Speaking what God says, he watches over his word. Let's watch over our word. Let's watch over our word. Peter had that. He had that revelation, and he stepped out. He abandons himself utterly, utterly to the power of Jesus. Come on. And suddenly, the Bible says, for the first time in history, an ordinary human walks on the water. God needs no president. He can do what he wants. He has never done before. He can do what he wants. He's never done before. God doesn't have to, you know, oh, oh that happened before. Yo, can I do it? No, God, I'm God. I'm God. God never counsels with the disciples of what he's going to do as it relates to miracles. He talks to one person. You know what that is? God, his father. Come on. I do what my father says. What you say? I, I do that. What you say? I, I believe I do that too, Lord. Come on. Get away from the, play, the space in your life where you're needing people to approve you. Amen. Amen. Preach, I'm listening to one person. That's my heavenly father. Amen. Come on. Amen. I, 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 want, I want God to be approved by the decisions that I make. I want God to move on my behalf because I'm honoring what he says. When you become a believer, it's two parts of salvation. God delivers you from sin, and then he delivers you from people. <laughs> but somehow we get locked on the part of being delivered from sin and not delivered from people. No. Uh -uh. Come on. Let's, let's ask God to deliver us from people. Let me move on. Let me move on. So did Peter walk on water? Yes, but unfortunately not for long. But he walked on it. What happened? I'm glad you asked. He shifted, here it is, his focus. He must have because he saw the wind. He no longer saw Jesus. He saw the wind. He saw the water, the waves coming. He no longer was focused on Jesus. He saw the wind as if it wasn't there in the first place. But he, but he, but he, but he, he shifted. The storm should not have been a surprise. It has been there all along. Problems was in your life before you met Jesus. But if you're going to be honest, it's easier for you to deal with your problems and stresses now because God is in your life versus when you got in, before you be, versus when you gave your life to the Lord. Storms are always there. And I don't want people to be deceived into thinking I'm thankful for your pastor. They don't teach this garbage that once you get saved, there's no longer you no longer gonna have problems. That's a lie from hell. It seems like there's more problems. More Jesus, more problems. No. More money, more problems. 
It's like the more Jesus I get, the more problem. And that is true. However, the skill that God gives us in the midst of our storms. So when it happens again, it's like, oh, I, no, I got that. No, I'm good on that one. No, that, oh, that wasn't bad. You ever had meetings that were scheduled and you stressed the whole time? Well, I'll tell you me. Um, I, had a, um, I had to call um, a few years ago. I had to call um, IRS. And I delayed it and delayed it because of the hard stories. You know, you don't want to talk to the IRS. They're the devil. They're the devil. <laughs> I called. I called. After working through all the stress, I called. And I ended up getting money that I didn't even know that I had. I'm like, man, I don't wait five years for this. Faith is false evidence that appears real. Hearing the testimony of other people. No, did, did you try it? Oh, let, let God speak to you. Do, do something different. Quit again trying to be concerned about what other people are saying because they will talk you out of your victory. Don't let somebody that don't have vision for themselves talk you out of the vision that God gave you. And it could be you. Get out of the mirror talking crazy about yourself. Stand at my daughter's house and, and in her bedroom, it's right above, it says, um, be amazing today. So every day, right? Be amazing today. Every morning she wakes up, it's up there. Be amazing today. Get in the mirror, stand and look and say, hey, I'm amazing. I'm going to be amazing. I am the righteousness of God. I am favored by God. I am loved. I am honored. I am adored. I, I am God's favorite. I am tattooed in God's hand every day. He's reminded, glory to God, that he's got to take care of me. I am one that God chose. He handpicked me. You better start talking to yourself. You don't talk to yourself about other stuff. How many of y'all used to drink? How many of y'all still drink? No, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just. <laughs> didn't that, didn't that liquor have you thinking some crazy stuff? Yes. Yes. Thinking you can just take on the world yes. until, and you were crazy enough to respond to it. Yes. No, so now, y'all down, y'all done went down memory lane too far. Come on back, come on, come on back up here. Come on, come on, come on, y'all. <laughs> That was past. That was past. I'm making a point. Stay with me. <laughs> I love y'all, Rock Church. Um, so if you did crazy stuff from a spirit in a bottle, why not respond to the written word of God? I am the head and not the tail. I am above and never beneath. I am the lender and not the borrower. Come on. I am healed. Come on. I am restored. I am victorious. Say what the word says, man. Say what the word says. Glory to God. Say what the word says. The Bible says he took his eyes off of where they should have been. That was on Jesus. He took his eyes off of Jesus. Beloved, this is critical. We must fight against the temptation to look away from Jesus to the circumstances, to self, and to every other distraction except the Lord. Amen. Faith, write this down, diminishes when the object of our faith is moved out of focus. Faith diminishes when the object of our faith is moved out of focus. You go to eye doctor and they put that lens adjustment thing on there and it looks good one or two three or four you can't say four because then I move to six hold on go back to that one your ability to see diminishes because the circumstances has changed your faith diminishes when the object of our faith is moved out of focus that instrument is out of focus so I can't see the same who else then are planning our hope, our hope upon? Who else then are we planning to pin our hope upon? Faith needs to be sustained and nurtured. A once upon a time faith will not do it. A once upon a time faith will not do it. You may have the faith to step out of the boat, 
but you need to have faith that will keep you above the water. So we pray, we pray, Lord, give me, give me the fortitude, right, to, to stay on top of the water. Father, I give you the latitude to help me to stay afloat. We need to grow our, in our faith in God. Did Peter fail? Yes. In a way, you can say he did. But that really isn't important to Jesus. I guess he knew it would come. Since Jesus also knows that Peter would deny him, knowing him, deny knowing him three times. He failed, but not really. He, he took the plunge. And he got back up. Come on. He got back up. If you can play something softly for me, man, I got it. I'm going to wrap it up. John Alterberg says there were 11 bigger failures sitting in the boat. <laughs> they felt quietly. Their failure went unnoticed and uncriticized. Just that Peter's failure was more public and obvious. But Peter has grown. Peter has grown through it. Every encounter with God is a faith-inspiring encounter. At least he came, at least he came to experience two things none of his peers had. Number one, only Peter knew the glory of walking on the water. He alone knew how it felt to be able to do what he was not acceptable or capable of doing alone. And then feeling the joy of being empowered by God to do. The second thing, only Peter knew the joy of being lifted up by Jesus in a moment of desperate need. Peter knew in a way the others could not. When he sank, Jesus was more than capable of saving him. Notice again the power of Jesus. He lifted Peter up while he himself was standing on the water. We give more credit to our problems than we do our Heavenly Father, our, our Lord and Savior. I love this here. Jesus is standing on your circumstances. Pulling you out and above your circumstances. But when our relationship is wavering, we're highlighting the problem, the circumstance, and forgetting about God. Notice the power of Jesus. He lifted Peter up while again standing there. They got into the boat together in verse 32. He was safe in the arms of the Lord until they climbed back into the boat. Only then did the wind die down. The problems will seem worse when you're not in relationship with Jesus. seems so much worse without Jesus. The wind died down. Peter was in the arms of the Lord in the midst of a raging storm walking upon the water. How safe can he be? None of the other disciples had a similar experience. They didn't. They couldn't because they didn't get out of the boat. The worst failure is not to sink in the waves. The worst failure is to not get out of the boat. The Lord is still calling us today, beloved, to step out of our comfort zone. That's what's, that's what's defeating us, is our comfort. Content, complacent. No, oh, I don't. I'm good. I want it. Why? Why don't you want to live? I'm good here. My bills are paid. I don't have to ever get on a plane. You're missing life. 
If I can't drive to it, I'm not going to it. Get out. Get out of your comfort zone. I'm not going to go swimming. You'll never experience the therapy that's in the water, the therapeutic sessions that happen in the water. Come on. Had I not taken that plunge and just to get in the water, I, I wouldn't experience the, the joy that my little princess has in the water. I couldn't experience it with her. So I get out of my comfort zone and get in this water and play and 30 seconds, baby, that's it, we out. But I got in it. I got in it, though, right? I, I, I did my part. But we get out of our comfort zone so that God can do more for us. Getting out of our comfort zone so that when we come to know him and experience his power in a more personal way, it will take faith to respond to his call, but... It always enables those whom he calls. So much more. I'm going to stop there. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Stand to your feet and receive that word if you did. Come on, can you stand to your feet and receive the word? So Heavenly Father, repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I decide today to move from doubt to dominion. Father, I ask now that you give me the faith to move out of my comfort zone. Glory to God. Say, Lord, I want to be uncomfortable for you. some faith to yourself. Come on, say that again. Say, Lord, Lord I want to be uncomfortable for you. I want to be uncomfortable for you. Glory to God. Say it with me. No fear lives here. No fear lives here. As I am uncomfortable, As I, am uncomfortable I know you're with me. So I rest in your arms. Make me uncomfortable. For your glory my good in Jesus name come on give the Lord some praise for that if you believe that come on give the Lord some praise come on come on come on come on come on come on glory to God glory to God glory to God amen hallelujah Lord I thank you Lord I thank you Lord I thank you how we doing pastor No. Thank you, Father. No, don't sing yet. Don't sing. Just play. I want you all just to worship. Just worship. Thank you, Father. Come on, out of your spirit, just worship the Father. Come on. Come on. Come on. Lord, we just bless your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My brother, what's your name with the Pistons jacket? Anthony. Anthony. Can I pray for you? All right. Lift your hands. You don't have to come up. You can stay right where you are. Yep. No, actually, come on up, Anthony. Thank you for your response, man of God. Thank you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Play something for me, man of God. Play something for me. Anthony. Yeah, lift your hands, man of God. Lift your hands. Yeah. Father, I just thank you for Anthony. God, I thank you for his heart. God, I thank you for the grace that's upon his life, Father. Lord, I thank you for being miraculous in his life, Lord, and, and showing him your love, your forgiveness, your grace towards him. Now, Anthony, I really felt like, you know, God is, has protected you from some things, man. God has removed some unhealthy relationships from around you for this purpose. I felt like God has really begin, has been speaking to you, even in your quiet time, and you know, um, sometimes of what past experiences or, or knowledge about God or whatever made you doubt if, in fact, he was speaking to you. 
but I feel like God has been speaking to your heart and I felt like God is really calling you to a place of complete submission to him and open mentorship young guys that have never experienced a father I feel like God is going to use you experientially to empower and strengthen them are you a member here? I feel like that this is a season God's going to begin to uh, knit your heart with your pastor. There's a need for you in this season here at Rock Church. And God is calling you to a place of consistency. I hear the Lord saying consistency is going to be the key in this next, the next three months is going to be critical for your own life, man of God. To be consistent in your walk with him. To be consistent in your faith your faithfulness to serve in ministry. I hear the Lord saying that what the enemy has meant for bad, I've turned it around for your good. I have taken circumstances and situations. I've, I've pulled you out of those situations to show that my hand is upon you. And what things you may have done in the past, God says, I've forgiven you. Now I'm calling you to forgive yourself. The guilt and the shame is robbing you of your freedom. I just see in the spirit your shoulders being squared, your head being up. I feel like that's what God is saying. I've forgiven you. Forgive yourself. And don't allow anyone to return you to that space he's freed you from. There are individuals that bring up your past to crush your spirit. I hear God saying for you to remove yourself from those relationships because they see the good in you, but they'd rather keep a thumb, keeping you under a thumb so that you don't excel in advance. Your tears have never gone unnoticed, God says. You a strong man, but you're holding in so much. Tears is a form of releasing. Shed your tears, man of God. You have children? Yeah. yeah. You have a son? Yeah. yeah. I feel like as you, as you, it's a purging. Once you release that past, once you shed those tears, I hear God saying, I'm going to do some healing with that relationship. For that desire is there and don't give up. Don't give up on that situation. God is with you. Lament. Cry out to him. In the next three months, you're going to see a complete turnaround in that situation, says God. Father, I seal this word in his heart now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for the warrior and the giant that he is, not just physically, Father, but in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Bless you, man of God. Absolutely. You receive that? Yeah. Oh, bro, you got to. You mad at me, bro? I just brought Okay. Amen. Love you, man of God. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, give the Lord some praise. We're done. It's on you, Pastor. It's on you, man. Yeah. 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 Let's you shake Yep, and there we go, there we go, amen. So let's try that again. Let's thank God for the word, y'all. From doubt to dominion, he said this very at the very beginning of this. You can be seated for a second. We get ready to go home in a minute. But it was faith to respond to God's word. And I think that's one of the biggest problems, especially here at Rock Church and in the body of Christ, we get good word. The question is, are you going to respond? 
Jesus gave Peter everything he needed with one word. It equipped him. It empowered him to do something that he's never done before. Never even seen it done. I'm preaching to somebody right now because there are some things that God has already told you and you've backed up because it don't look comfortable and it don't feel comfortable. But that one word, I don't know who this is for, is going to change your life if you respond to it. It's predicated on you. Charles, you ministered a word, I think it was last year. You forgot it. So I'm still in it. Publicly. But you said, do, and then you'll do, and you'll do. You remember that? Thank you, it's mine now. Amen. That's what pastors do, we steal. Amen. Amen. But if you D-O, you will get the D-E-W when you are D-U-E. You still in that one, Otto? <laughs> we, we all still in that. And you won't get the D-E-W when you expect to be D-U-E because we won't D-O. Because we won't. Peter, man, y'all, you, 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 you messed, man, you, you, stay important. Amen, amen. <laughs> That's a hot word right there. Y'all don't understand. If, Peter, you asked for this, man. I need y'all to get this. You asked Jesus for this. And there are some things you've been asking God for. You've been laying on your face, and in a minute, it's about to be another year that went by. It's going to be 2025, and you still going to be expected because you didn't deal. You've been asking him for it, and what he gave you was a word. And if you don't do the word, you not going to, you ain't going to get your due. I don't know about y'all, but I got a mountain dew in my spirit. Some of y'all going to catch that later on. Because huh? the, the, the drink ain't mountain D-O. Okay, y'all don't understand. I'm looking for a major mountain of dew, y'all. So whatever he tells me to do, I don't care how crazy I look, I don't, crazy, I don't care how crazy it may sound, but when it's all said and done, I will be able to declare this is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. And I believe we got at least 25 people that can say I'm ready to do so I can get my due when I'm due in the name of Jesus. We bind the spirit of being comfortable. There's nowhere in the Bible where you can show me that God wants you to be comfortable. The closest thing you can find is he sent the comforter. But I don't know where we get this from about trying to be comfortable. When you're comfortable, you stay there. Okay, I'm going to let that marinate. Whenever you're in a comfortable position, you stay there. That's why on Sunday morning, the bed is so comfortable. And it's a fight to get out that bed. That bed is never that comfortable all week. Oh, I know I'm preaching right now. I'm the pastor, and it'd be comfortable to me. Every good show was on on that day. But think about it. When you're comfortable, you don't want to move. You want to stay there. And I don't know who this is for, but this next move that God has for you is going to be uncomfortable. And this is why some of us are stuck, because we want to stay in a place of being comfortable. It's not comfortable being in a storm and stepping outside of a boat. But what if you do something that's different? 
Because you know how this boat ride ends up. He was a fisherman. He know how it ends up. You know, plug, I put that in my book too, uh, about the storm. Some of us backed up off of it because some water splashed in our face. You was already out there, but some water splashed in your face. Did you forget you was already in the storm? <sighs> Come on, can we stand at our feet right now? In the name of Jesus. Come on, we're not trying to be comfortable, especially now for 2025. Don't worry about that. Whoever getting office twos, they're going to make it uncomfortable, so don't worry about it. Whoever it is, my trust is in God. But I need you to understand, God has put his hand on you for this season. And you got to be willing to do what the man of God said. You're going to have to get out that boat. From doubt to what, church? Dominion. How many of y'all want to dominate now? Come on, I need some folks that's ready to dominate. You ready to walk in your authority? You ready to win in the name of Jesus? We bind the spirit of doubt right now. Look at your neighbor and say, we bind that spirit of doubt. Matter of fact, come on, I need you to pray with that person right next to you right now that they won't doubt. No more failing visions in the name of Jesus. Come on, we bind in doubt right now. False evidence that appears real. Uh-uh. We bind that pain right now in the name of Jesus. Come on. We bind that, yeah, that depression, that anxiety right now in the name of Jesus. Overthinking right now. Everything that's causing you to doubt. Come on. We use our authority as children of God, and we speak to that thing right now in the name of Jesus. He said, I've given you the keys to the kingdom. That whatsoever you say, heaven is going to be in agreement. Heaven does not need to be in agreement with your doubt. You got to understand the power you have. Whatever. It didn't say <laughs> that heaven going to be in agreement as long as it's good. No, it's based off whatever you say. Whatever, whether it's good or bad. That's why you can't be going around doubting. Heaven will have to be in agreement with your doubt. If that's what you're saying, if you say you'll never have a house like that, okay, you won't. Come on, Father, have your way in this house right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> we don't care. Come on, come on, we don't care. Come on, come on, come on. I need y'all to get that in your spirit because folks going to talk. Folks going to talk, but you need to have an attitude of, I don't care. You don't think those disciples was talking? Okay, okay. You don't think they were saying, look at this fool right here? Doing something they never been done before? I can see it right now. They probably was trying to grab his arm like, dude, don't you step out there. Watch this. That ain't God. Y'all missed it. I'll shout right there. <laughs> Why would he tell you to get out of a perfectly good boat when you can die out there? Yeah. Don't you start dating again? Oh, yeah. That's all my trust issue folks out there. But you believe in God for a husband. Make it make sense. Lord, bless my finances. <laughs> what part of a job don't you understand? <laughs> it's going to be uncomfortable. Because you know what? He said, your ways is not like my ways. And your thoughts is not like mine. You want this, Peter? You want to come out this boat? Get ready for something to be very uncomfortable. But I guarantee you, you make it through this, you're going to be one of the baddest disciples that ever walked this planet. Because you was willing to step out. If I can get you to step out, boy, don't you know people are going to get healed because of your shadow? Can't say that about all the other ones, but you the one. 
in the name of Jesus. With every head by every eye closed, I don't know if there's anyone here that desires to be saved right now, but this is your opportunity to get to know Jesus in a better way. In the name of Jesus. We declare this altar is open right now in the name of Jesus. If you desire to be a member of this church, we declare this altar is open. If you want to rededicate, it's open in the name of Jesus. Listen, the Bible says <laughs> when it's all said and done, every knee is going to bow. You're going to do it. Every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord. It's better to get your business straight right now. That when you stand before God, he can say, thy good and faithful servant. Well done. So church, begin to pray. Intercede right now with the name of Jesus. Pray for those that's on your road. Pray for those that's around you. That they'll make a decision to serve God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. <laughs> yeah, in the name of Jesus. Folks are praying right now. Intercede. Intercede. Matter of fact, pray for yourself that you will do what you're supposed to do. That you will do what you're supposed to do. Can I tell y'all a quick secret? <laughs> do you know Peter walking on water wasn't even Jesus' idea? Some of y'all will catch that when you get home. That was Peter's idea. And he needed God to approve it. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He'll direct. He'll direct. And maybe there's some things that have not shown up in your life. Because you ain't doing what you need to be doing, man. But I declare next season we're going to do it. Amen? Well, let's shout the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, man of God, we thank you. Amen. Thank you for your family. Praise God, praise God in the name of Jesus. You may be seated real quick and then we get ready to go home in the name of Jesus. Wasn't that an awesome word? Yes. Come on, what an awesome word? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God, praise God. We, wanna, we are going to bless the man of God, but I want to bless the man of God. Is that all right? Yes. Is that all right? Yes. Praise God. There's envelopes in the back or if you want to go straight to his, uh, you got Cash App or Zelle? Can you, uh, what, what is that? They can put it up on the screen. We want to bless him. If you want to just do cash, just put it on the, the altar, grab an envelope or whatever. We want to make sure he's good. We're going to take care of him as, as a church. We want to make sure that you put something in some anointed hands. Amen? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And after that, we're going to have our video announcements, and then we're going home in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of y'all waiting on the cash up. Codrigus, C O D R I G U S, cash app. C O D R I G U S. Zell is Codrigus uh, at gmail.com. Praise God. Believe in somebody for that million dollars. Go ahead and put it on on there. In there, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. They'll put it up on the screen shortly. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. In the name of Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. 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 Hallelujah. I need everyone to make sure you are praying this week. If you ain't never prayed before, this ought to be a good time. And we're not talking about now I laid me down to sleep. We need to be praying, Lord, whatever the outcome is on Tuesday. What shall I say, Wednesday? Because the election is Tuesday, right? So whatever Wednesday look like. Amen. We declare that God is on the throne. He's on the throne. Don't be acting a fool with your cousins out there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Let God be God. Amen. Let God be God. Let his will be done in the name of Jesus. Praise God. We ask that you would stretch your hands towards your giving. 
in the name of Jesus. Father, in obedience to your word, you said what we give up for the kingdom. We'll get it back and we'll get it back in a hundredfold. So right now, we speak to our offering and we tell it to go and grow it real soon. Well, yeah, we'll see it real soon in the name of Jesus. Father, anoint this. Yeah, yeah, touch this family right now with the name of Jesus. And they travel back to Portland, Father. And we declare in the name of Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. Traveling grace. And as he is poured into us, yeah, let there be an outpour. Yeah, in Portland. We declare it was necessary. And all things work together for the good. In the name of Jesus. We declare healing right now for this family. We declare deliverance right now with the name of Jesus. And we declare no weapon formed against them shall prosper in the name of Jesus. The joy of the Lord will be their strength and they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them in the name of Jesus. We declare better in the name of Jesus. They meant it for evil but God meant it for good in Jesus name. Amen. Couple, there's the cash app and the Zelle on the screen. If you can go ahead and go there and praise God. A couple announcements and we get ready to go home. If they can go ahead and do the announcements in Jesus' name. Good morning, Good morning, Rock Church. These are your announcements, are your announcements for November, for November 3rd, 3rd, 2024. On Wednesday, on Wednesday November, 13th, November 13th, the Ministerial, the ministerial Alliance, Alliance will be meeting, will be meeting at, 7 at 7 p.m. All ministers, All ministers are, expected are expected to attend. To attend. On, the on the following Wednesday, Wednesday November, 20th, November 20th, Healing Hearts will be meeting, will be meeting once, again. once again. If you have if ever you have had, ever to, had to, deal to deal with the loss of any kind, be it the loss of a loved one, a relationship, or anything else, Healing Hearts is a powerful, intimate place to find healing and support. We have we have good news. news. The church, the church bus, bus is, up, is and up and running. That means, that means if you or if anyone, you anyone you know needs a to church, to church, you can now you can request, now request to have the church, the church bus, bus pick, you pick you up. If you need if a ride, please contact Mother Arthur in advance. We are asking, we are asking you, make you make request your request by Wednesday, so we have so time, we have to, plan time to plan accordingly. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? This, this is Minister Marcel, Marcel coming, coming at you coming at once again to remind, to remind you that this week, that is, week, that is this coming Wednesday, Wednesday November, November 6th, 6, will be our, be our first, first principles class. class. And this month, and this we're, month going we're going to be talking about, about something kind, kind of controversial, even though we know it shouldn't be, and that is giving, giving to the church, church, giving to the poor, giving to God. How should, How should we, we going be going about, about it? Is tithing is something, something that we should still be doing? Or is it under the law? law? These are the kind, are the kind of things that we're that going to talk about because we're not after not your money, your but, money but this is part, a part. You're walking your walk with God. We want to make sure we're doing it and make sure we're doing it right. So that is this Wednesday, November 6th. I'll see you there. This concludes our announcement. Please govern yourself accordingly and have a blessed week. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. If there's nothing else, let's get ready to go home in Jesus' name. Look at your neighbor and say, it's good to see you. Amen, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the eyes have seen and ears have heard. Thank you for this message. Thank you for the messenger. Thank you for his family, Father. And Father, we want to just thank you for finding favor with us to allow us to hear this message, Father. Yeah. And thank you for doing what you're famous for. You're always working things out. So, Father, we want to give you honor and glory. And we declare right now as a unified body of believers that the devil is defeated. <laughs> and Jesus is still Lord. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. And hug somebody before you go. In Jesus' name, amen.